Hello and welcome to Volusia Magazine. I'm Amber Osman. In today's episode, we'll celebrate a huge achievement for the Daytona Beach International Airport. Kendra Lee visits the Stetson Mansion in Volusia here and now, and Stephanie Strong reports on the county's WIC program. Those segments, news, and more coming right up on Volusia Magazine. I hope you stay tuned. The skies were definitely blue last week, Thursday, when the community celebrated the beginning of non-stop JetBlue air service from Daytona Beach International Airport to New York City. Hundreds of people were on hand as the Volusia County Council and JetBlue officials cut the ribbon to celebrate the airline's inaugural flight into Daytona Beach Thursday, January 7th. The new air service caps a long recruitment effort by county officials. We'll have much more on this major economic development story later in the broadcast in a special JetBlue Business Beat. Staying on topic with the airport, the Volusia County Council recently dedicated the Volusia Room at the Daytona Beach International Airport to former director Dennis McGee, honoring his long career with Volusia County government. McGee retired February 26th of 2010 after a 31-year career, 25 of those years as airport director. The airport terminal opened in October of 1992 and was built under the leadership of McGee. Members of the McGee family and airport staff unveiled the new signage of the airport's meeting and banquet room. County Manager Jim Deneen said it was Dennis McGee's vision and leadership that shaped Daytona Beach International Airport into the economic development resource that it is today. Along with his dedication and the years he put in and his personality and how he really put his heart and soul in this place, we're also recognizing it for his vision. See, Dennis saw not just the need for today, but he envisioned a facility that would be able to be used long term into the future, could be expanded, but have, would have an architectural feel of this celebration of sunshine, of this openness, a celebration of flight. And in a way, it was built with the, the idea that you could expand the, the base of the operation out here with very little change as success came your way. And that's what we're doing today. So in some ways, we're taking advantage of that vision that Dennis had, which was, and his vision was probably 20 years ahead of its time. And I think we owe it to him and his family to recognize him not just as a person, as a dedicated employee, but also as a visionary. And today, we're, we're, what we're doing is putting building blocks on top of the, basically on top of the foundation that he laid. Next to the entrance doors of the Dennis R. McGee room is a dedication plaque which in part reads, May all who travel through this airport and the important work performed by all who enter this meeting room be blessed by his memory. Residents and tourists who visit Volusia County beaches will notice a new convenience this year at the vehicle access booths. Thaniel, the new county-selected toll taker, assumed toll operations on January 1st and has installed new vehicle access booths which are equipped to accept credit and debit cards. Beachgoers can also purchase annual passes online in advance of beach and inlet park trips. Andrew Clayton, vice president of toll operations for Faneuil, said the goal is to get folks on the beach as quickly as possible, minimizing traffic backups at the toll booths. What the county was really trying to do was bring in, bring in a real toll operation. Um, and part of a good and a, and a more sophisticated toll operation is the introduction of debit and credit cards. Um, you know, with a, with a booth that has no power in it, we had some unique challenges, but we were able to find a great solution with our partner E-Transit. Um, we, we built a completely mobile and powered solution, um, and, and that's at every tolling point um, in Volusia County where you can gain access to the beach. So it, it starts with a handheld scanner unit. Um, we have mobile printers, uh, mobile 
um, uh, credit card devices that are all chip and chip technology enabled, and uh, you know has been out there for now four or five days, uh, and has been working very very well for us. Um, with our scanning technology, it's very very quick. You have an annual pass, we can scan you from three feet away. Volusia County residents with proof of residency, a driver's license, and matching vehicle registration or property tax bill will continue to have free vehicle access for the remainder of January. Vehicle access fees for residents from February 1st through November 30th are $10 for a daily pass, $25 for an annual pass, $20 for an annual inlet park pass, and $45 for an annual beach and inlet park combo pass. Annual passes are valid from January 1st until December 31st. Vehicle access fees for non-Volusia County residents are $10 for a daily pass, $20 for an annual inlet park pass, $100 for an annual beach pass, and $120 for a combination beach and inlet park pass. For more information, you can call 866-398-6352 or you can go online to volusiabeachpass.com. It's a short ride from your neighborhood to your naturehood. Find fun activities to do, like boating and biking, or camping and hiking, plus much more. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. Not ready for the holiday season to be over just yet? Florida's first luxury home will continue to celebrate until January 15th. Reporter Kendra Lee takes us inside the Stetson Mansion for its Christmas Spectacular in this week's Volusia Here and Now. John B. Stetson, the maker of America's most iconic symbol, the Stetson Cowboy Hat, built Florida's first luxury estate right here in Volusia County. When J.T. and Michael purchased the property, this little schoolhouse was totally off of its foundation. The house and the schoolhouse are both built on pilings, and that's what we feel kept the house and the schoolhouse so well preserved over the years. Listed on the National Register, the property offers visitors not only a look at the mansion's rich architecture, but also a journey into a Christmas wonderland for a limited time. In 1886, for famed hat maker John B. Stetson, I'm sure someone in everyone's life out there knows someone that has a Stetson hat, this was his winter retreat. Um, this was one of the first homes in Florida with electricity, if not the first home. This was the largest, grandest, most historic home ever built in the state of Florida prior to the 20th century. Today, Stetson Mansion is a private occupied residence that gets into the holiday spirit in a big way. Though open 12 months a year for touring, the mansion only offers their Christmas Spectacular tours November 15th through January 15th by private booking. Tours can be booked online and happen about four times a day, but some days can be up to 11 times. So there is always a guarantee for just about everyone to find a space to come in and enjoy the popular Florida tourist attraction. We offer two tours normally, except for the Christmas season. There's the one tour that would be the Christmas Spectacular Tour. And what entails, what's entailed in that tour is guests get to go on the first and second floor. But most importantly, and it's become uh, a tradition for families, not just in Central Florida, but now around the country, they're making this Christmas Spectacular part of their family experience during the Christmas and holiday season. Because when you walk through those front doors, it's going to be something like you've never seen before. Thomas is not a believer in less is more. After eight weeks of tireless preparation, the mansion is decked to the nines in everything Christmas. We feature nativities from uh, 
over 15 different countries around the world, and there is a nativity featured in every single room, including a very, very special room called O Holy Night, which features an actual nativity tree. Um, so guests will experience not only the history, but they'll experience Christmas uh, and the holiday season up until January 15th. But after the holiday season, then we're open for our standard tours and grand tours. And the grand tour includes all three floors of the mansion. And that entails all the history, all the uh, stories of the Stetsons, of the famous guests, as well as the restoration that was uh, entailed during the time that Michael and I came on board since 2005. Pricing for the Christmas Spectacular is $25 per person for an hour and a half fully guided tour. During the regular season, the standard tour is $20 and the grand tour, which includes all three floors in the original schoolhouse, is $30. This year is a year of celebrations. We're celebrating 150 years of the Stetson Hat Company and you'll see that in the front room when you come in. We're also celebrating Americana and what's more Americana than Norman Rockwell. So the reception parlor features Norman Rockwell, Saturday Evening Post prints and pictures as well as an original in the center of the room and over 50 different plates from the Norman Rockwell collection. And then the dining room, which I mentioned before, is Oh Holy Night. Oh Holy Night is a nativity scene like you've never seen before. This room features the signature tree of the Christmas Spectacular. This fresh Christmas tree features a full-size nativity scene embedded into a tree itself. Visit the Sesson Mansion between now and January 15th to receive a BOGO ticket. Come back between February and September with a paying guest and you'll be free. We have about a 30% return rate of visitors and the great thing about the return rate is they don't just come back. They come back with friends and family. So it really is something that people want to share. And it's pretty amazing that we have it right here in our little neck of the woods called Volusia County. The holidays are still happening at the Stetson Mansion until January 15th. To book a tour, visit stetsonmansion.com. For Volusia Here and Now, I'm Kendra Lee. Don't wait. Communicate. Make your emergency plan today. Stephanie Strong gives us tips on how to wisely spend your WIC dollars on fruits and vegetables. Are you spending all of your WIC fruit and vegetable dollars each month? There is a wide variety of choices of fruits and vegetables available to you. You can buy any combination of fresh, frozen, or canned fruits and vegetables each month. Well, the WIC program stands for women, infant, and children under the age of five. It is a special supplemental nutritional program by the United States Department of Agriculture. What our nutrition campaign for fruits and vegetables, our healthiest weight message that we want them to take away from that is that fruits and vegetables are nutritious as well as delicious and you should include those in your meals every day. Before you shop, plan your weekly meals and snacks before you go shopping. Look at grocery store flyers from the newspaper or go online to see what fruits and vegetables are for sale. Think variety. Try a new fruit or vegetable each week. While you shop, purchase fresh fruits and vegetables in season when they tend to be cheaper. Buy fruits and vegetables that you will cut up at home, not the ones already cut up in the store. Pre-cut fruits and vegetables are a lot more expensive. Buy canned and frozen fruits with no added sugar, syrup, or artificial sweeteners. Choose veggies with low or reduced sodium. Consider store brands instead of name brands. Store brands tend to cost less. After you shop, use fresh fruits and vegetables within a few days after shopping. Use frozen and canned fruits and vegetables later on. Chop some fruits and vegetables and place them in storage containers. Keep them in the refrigerator so they will be ready to grab for lunches and snacks. Be a role model. Parents should set a good example by eating plenty of fruits and vegetables.
Well, one of our healthiest tips that we want parents to do is to be a role model. Parents just set a good example by eating fruits and vegetables along with their child each and every day. Prevent choking for children three years and under. Cut grapes, apples, and other firm fruits into very small pieces. Remove any tough skins. Cook carrots and hard vegetables until they are soft. Then cut into small pieces. For Volusia Magazine, I'm Stephanie Strong, Public Information Officer for the Florida Department of Health in Volusia County. Okay, so we drowned the fire, yep. stirred it, mm -hmm. drowned it again, mm -hmm. and now just feel if it's cold. Yeah. Cool. Smokey just gave me a bear hug. I know. I already posted it. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. Well, it's time to go out to Daytona Beach International Airport, where Joanne Magley gives us a special business beat on the arrival of JetBlue Airways. Hundreds of people packed the second floor of Daytona Beach International Airport Thursday to celebrate the inaugural flight of JetBlue Airways. The popular low-cost carrier just started daily nonstop service between New York City and Daytona Beach. Jim Deneen, the county manager for Volusia County government, helped welcome the crowd. I want to give enormous credit to the Volusia County Council, which is a responsible for approving the lease with JetBlue and for approving the incentives the county has pledged to make this business arrangement a winner for all. The county is all about setting the table for economic prosperity, and this day is another county success story. I also want to thank our business community partners who are supportive of this new service project, or new service, with money, actual cash, into the travel bank. This financial support is critically important to the JetBlue incentive package. This is the exact definition of a public-private partnership. I want to stop here to say I want to thank all the private partners, but the key private partner, and I know she won't want to be acknowledged for this, has been the Speedway and Lisa France Kennedy, who's here. She was the absolute key in the private sector. Without her support, this airline would not be here today. Rick Carl is the director of the Daytona Beach International Airport and has worked for years on building and nurturing the relationship with JetBlue. Rick introduced the crowd to Scott Lawrence, Senior Vice President for Airline Planning for JetBlue. It's my uh, distinct honor to introduce uh, Scott Lawrence, Senior Vice President for Airline Planning for JetBlue. Scott has a lot on his plate at JetBlue. He's responsible for all aspects of JetBlue's network strategy, he also oversees JetBlue's airline partnership portfolio, which includes more than 40 airlines across the globe. Uh, first of all, I, I will say that uh, we've opened 93 other cities. None of them have been like this. <laughs> you know, Rick and his, uh, his, his stalker phone calls and meetings <laughs> 
uh, told me that we would be overwhelmed by the level of support here. And I will tell you, we are overwhelmed. If this continues, we're going to need more ribbons and more scissors and more events like this. This is absolutely outstanding. To see the community rally around JetBlue to welcome us this way is truly special. So again, thank you so much for coming out. Thank you so much for your support of JetBlue. Thank you. Community support was a major factor in JetBlue's decision to start service in Daytona Beach. Steve Cook, the airport's former business development director, helped recruit JetBlue. Well, JetBlue, I think they got their certification in 1999. We basically uh, went up there in 2000. We, they were in Connecticut. They were on Kings Highway in uh, Darien, Connecticut. And we made our first presentation. We had Kevin Bowler with us from Daytona Beverages. We had George Maribal and Dennis McGee. And we started making our, our pitch you know, to them at that time. And over the years, we've been to see them, I would say, dozens of times. Called them maybe hundreds of times. Developed good relation you know, with, with JetBlue and really presented our case uh, many, many times. I think it got more traction back in 2012. We had uh, Dave Barger here, who's the president of JetBlue. And we had about an hour with Dave, Rick Carl and I, and we uh, really got to go through everything that Daytona Beach and Volusia County has to offer. I think at that point we got more traction at that point. I think they started to listen to us much more and we started to move to the top of the list. Jay Cassens now serves as the airport's director of business development and has been involved with nearly every detail of the new airline service. Bringing a new airline takes many years of preparation. Um, I believe this started, the conversations with JetBlue started back in 2000 when JetBlue first started service. And ever since then, it's been pursued by airport executives and Steve Cook. And just recently, uh, Embry-Riddle and the Speedway really got the ball rolling. And the thing is about air service development and bringing JetBlue here is that it's not just an airport initiative, it's a community initiative. So it's been a long time coming. This has been a big deal. Um, and we're really looking forward to JetBlue being here full time now and being successful and expanding in the future. Even though the airport is a service of Volusia County, the Enterprise Fund, that's the way that the airport is managed. We do not run our airport or operate our airport with ad valorem tax dollars. Um, the airport revenue that's generated has to stay on the airport, has to be used for the operation, uh, the maintenance and security of the airport. Um, all the money that we generate from the airlines gets reinvested into the terminal and used for future development. Even though there was a lot of incentives involved with bringing JetBlue here, and that's a big part of air service development and especially small communities, um, part of the incentives was um, you know, landing fees were waived, ground handling fees were waived, um, terminal rent uh, was waived for the first year. So there's a lot of incentives involved. There was the travel bank and many others. But what we get back in the end is um, approximately $21.70 per passenger. And if you span that out over a year, that's over a million dollars. And that includes uh, car rental concessions, food concessions, um, parking, PFCs, which is passenger facility charges, and grants from the FAA. So every passenger that comes through here contributes to really the redevelopment of the airport in the long term. Some of the people in attendance were local business leaders who contributed financially to the JetBlue Travel Bank. So the Travel Bank was a very unique part of the incentive package to lure JetBlue to come to Daytona Beach. The um, businesses in the area pledged a um, certain number of tickets to purchase over a two-year period. Uh, there's over 25 businesses and it's about a quarter of a million dollars that they have pledged to commit to fly JetBlue from Daytona Beach to New York being a, a natural northern you know, extension of 95, um, the east coast of Florida is very popular to them. That direct flight from Daytona to New York and New York to anywhere in the world is really huge from a business perspective and a travel perspective. Many of the speakers shared the same remarks about the newest airline partner. Teamwork made things happen. This truly has been a community effort and your presence here shows the community's enthusiasm for this new nonstop service to New York. It also shows what we can accomplish when we work together. For this special edition of The Business Beat, I'm Joanne Magley.
Thank you, Joanne, and thank you, too, for watching Volusia Magazine. If you have any questions about the show, you can feel free to give us a call at any of the numbers you see listed here, or you can log on to volusia.org and click on the News tab at the top of the screen to find us. Incidentally, you can find the County Council's meeting calendar there, too. In fact, you can use volusia.org to find out about meeting dates, workshops, topics of interest, activities, and how you can become involved. And we hope you won't forget to listen to Volusia Today. That's Volusia County Government's weekly public radio broadcast. Volusia Today airs every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Sunday mornings on the local radio stations you see on your screen. For Volusia Magazine, I'm Amber Osman. Have a wonderful evening. <music>